In this class, we are going to learn how to make use of select multiple component in Visual Builder or in App UI. So here is the component which I have dropped in the Visual Builder. So at the time of recording this class, select multiple component is available in the Visual Builder as part of the early release. By early release, I mean if you just search over here select, you will see that select multiple is an early access component. By the time you watch this class, this could be available within the forms and inputs. So at the time I record this class, it is under the early access. Unlike select single, in select multiple, the user will be allowed to select multiple records. Here I will select multiple records. In this case, I'm having three records over here for three countries, India, Saudi, Russia. I'm selecting three. Here you will see count of records selected by the user. As soon as I tab out, it will be assigned to the variable which will be created in the event. So I will show you one of the use case how we can make use of this select multiple component in the actual project scenario wherein we will pass these values as a comma separated value if you see Russia, comma Saudi, comma India. We will pass this as a bind parameter to the SQL query or in other words the ORDS REST API and we will fetch the records from the table. I will show you how the, my table looks like and how I have built the ORDS API. Now if I click on this button, I will make a call to my ORDS API and it will pass the data as a comma separated string. If I show you the network tab over here, here is my API call and if I go to the preview over here or the headers, here if you see BU name is one of the header parameters which I have created and this is the value which I am sending that is the comma separated value of three countries which the user has selected and in the response whatever data I am having in the database it is being written. So in my database I am having couple of records for the two countries India and Russia and for Saudi I don't have. So what and all records are matched, I am returning back the data as a ORDS API response. So this is one of the actual project requirement you will have in your applications wherein the user will ask you to provide a feature in the form layout or in the search where the user can select multiple records like if the user wants to select the multiple invoice numbers or location and they want to see the records available in the database so and so forth things you can build such scenario wherein you will pass the value as a bind parameter to SQL query ORDS API so and so forth things the way how you send the data back to the target endpoint is completely driven by the business use case in this case in my ORDS API I'm just sending it as a comma separated value but in your case you could be sending this as an array or the object now let me go back to my application and show you how I have consumed this select multiple component. First of all, you have to search the select multiple component, just drag and drop it something like this. So as soon as you drop, at the time of recording this class, we don't get an option that is for the quick start. So quick start is not available. So one of the way how you can arrive at like white and all attributes we may be needing in order to populate this select multiple component is by looking at the OJET cookbook over here. So here is the OJET cookbook for select multiple component it is under the form select and combo box under that select multiple and overview here if you just scroll down you will see the html source code and if you see over here one is the data we need that is the sdp one is the label if you just click on the drop down the user should be able to see the label and then the assignment on selection of particular records where the data will be saved and the hint three to four parameters or the attributes are needed so first thing is we have to create the SDP variable manually. We can go to the variables over here and create the SDP variable. And you can call any of the endpoints. In my case, I'm calling the business object. So in your case, you could be calling any endpoint that is to fetch the data from wherever you are getting the list of values data. In my case, I'm getting this list that is countries list. So you would be getting similar kind of list like the list of invoice numbers, so and so forth things. So this is the first thing you have to create the SDP variable. And another variable you have to create that is to store the values selected by the user. So you can go for the any type. Let me go to the page designer. If I select this multiple over here, come to the data. So whenever user selects multiple records, so it will be saved to this BU names. So it is under the values. And if I go to the all over here, under the data, you will see the SDP variable using which this component will be populated. So in the SDP variable, we are having n number of items or the parameters. So out of that, what we want to show as a label that we can define over here, that is under the items text. So here, whatever name I'm showing, it is from the name attribute from my response that I'm populating over here. That is the item text. What I want to show in the list of value is the name attribute. So this is the first thing you have to do. On selection of the records in the list of value, once the user clicks outside, we have to create an event that is to convert in my case i am converting the selection that is set to a comma separated value so this kind of string i am preparing 
so whenever user selects the records in the select multiple you will see it as a set so in the javascript term it will be something like this flower brackets and the name of the country in my case like russia india so and so forth things so once we have a set what i'm doing is i'm converting that set to a comma separated value with this logic and i'm assigning that value to the csv string which i've created over here which will hold the string data so that is nothing but the string of country names in my case now once the user selects the details what i'm doing is i'm passing the same to my backend that is the ords api which i've created so for that on click of the button i have created uh, action chain which will call my ords api and bu name is one of the header parameters i have created where i'm passing the comma separated string that is bu name underscore csv that's it i'm not populating any table suppose if you want to populate a table then you can assign that to adp or if you want to populate with the help of sdp that also you can do at runtime so this is completely left to you how you want to solve your project requirements now coming to the ords api so this is the table which i'm showing it over here it's a very simple table i'm having data only for three countries as of now and my ords api looks something like this wherein i'm just fetching the name parsing the comma separated values and checking if that particular country is available in my database that is over here so russia and india are available saudi is not there rather we have uae but we are don't pass that uae over here so this is a very simple ords api i have created and in the parameters bu name as you see over here bu name is the header parameter which i have created in my ords api which is mapped to this bu underscore name that is the bind parameter that is over here so like this you can make use of select multiple component and you can provide the user a feature to select the multiple records so this will be very useful when you provide a search form layouts in your project wherein the user will query the PO numbers but is in one go the user will select multiple PO numbers or they can select multiple locations and get the data for that particular location. So the usage of this component is enormous in your projects.